It's great to know that Antifa is looking out for you. Just look at what they did to protect you from a Montreal, Quebec man. They robbed and attacked him and broke his arm and split his lip when they spotted him on St. Catherine Street holding a sign exhibiting a horrible, sexist, fascist, evil statement. The sign read simply, children cannot consent to puberty blockers. Stop the child abuse. Oh, Canada, or so the song goes, and while the anthem is meant to be praiseful, there are numerous signs that it's becoming a lament because of leftist trouble arising in that northern nation. The latest comes by way of Tom Pappert of National File and from courageous independent journalist Andy No, both of whom report that a Montreal, Quebec man named Chris Elston was robbed and attacked suffering a split lip Am I bleeding? and a broken arm when Antifa goons spotted him on St. Catherine Street holding a sign exhibiting a factual statement. The sign read, Children cannot consent to puberty blockers. Stop the child abuse. Can anyone dispute that? As a matter of legal history, minors in Canada and the U.S., in most of the Western world, in fact, for centuries have been considered dependents and incapable of giving their legal consent to anything until they reach the age of majority. Now, in six of the 13 Canadian provinces, that age, statutorily, is placed at 19 while in the remaining seven, the government places it at 18. And of course, a judge or court proceeding can make select rulings on things like emancipation for those who are younger, or they can do this on a case-by-case -case basis. So why would people in black masks rob and physically attack a person holding a sign that states such a simple fact as applied to puberty-blocking drugs? Well, perhaps, it's because Antifa is a Marxist organization. Marx openly despised the family unit, despite having conversely praised the patriarchy in his 1848 Communist Manifesto, and Antifa and other leftists have for years worked to undermine family cohesiveness through such amorphous rhetorical weapons as child sexual liberation. Writes Papert, at 6 p.m. on Friday, Elston says he was protesting in Montreal, Canada, when several Antifa members arrived in a vehicle and began assaulting him. And at 7.07 p.m., Elston tweeted his first announcement about the attack. I just got attacked by about seven people, punched multiple times, signs smashed, body cam gone, forearm might be broken. Police are on the way. And shortly after 8 p.m., Elston updated his status, offering footage from his handheld phone and wrote, I'm all good, just waiting for an x-ray on my forearm, but I'll be fine. I used it to block several pylon hits. They took my sign with the body cam, but I managed to film them with my phone during the tail end of the assault. Soon thereafter, he tweeted, I was having peaceful conversations on St. Catherine Street, joined by a local man. A bunch of these thugs suddenly swarmed me. I'm told there were about seven. But of course, Antifa, which is all about tolerance, by the way, can't tolerate peaceful conversations. They have to engage in fascistic attacks against peaceful people because, of course, Antifa is uh, anti-fascist. Well, after a couple hours spent in the emergency room, Elston was able to tweet again, giving more details and confirming that indeed, the thugs claiming they love the little guy had broken his arm. My left forearm is broken, but I feel worse for my new friend who came out to support. He took a blow and had his expensive watch broken. Well, there we go, a victory against capitalism. Heroic Antifa gets to smash the idols of capitalism like uh, time pieces. They get to break arms and they get to tear down oppressive facts, such as the reality that kids can't give consent to puberty blockers. All in lovely Canada. How lovely that a man and a friend can't peacefully express their thoughts out on the street. It's almost as if leftists don't like free speech, but instead like to push people around and threaten them as ways to control speech. How strange that such a thing might manifest in a nation that, since the 2016 passage of Statute C-16, sees the government threaten virtually any business person who does not use the pronoun another person demands when frequenting a shop. 
How strange that this kind of thing might arise in a nation where University of Toronto psychology professor and philosophical commentator Jordan Peterson was maligned and surrounded. Would you never I've got to stop, the guys. Never mind the There's too way. many of you. Okay, one simple I, I, question. Have enough. Sorry, I can't be many of For defending the right to choose his own words and when and where he might attenuate his pronoun use based on each interpersonal interaction. As Bruce Party wrote about C-16 at the time for National Post, in other words, failure to use a person's pronoun of choice, ha, <laughs> sorry. In other words, failure to use a person's pronoun of choice, they, zer, they, or any other of a multitude of other potential non-words will land you in hot water with the commission. That, in turn, can lead to orders for correction, apology, Soviet-like re-education, fines, and in cases of continued non-compliance, incarceration for contempt of court. This peril is exactly what Peterson warned of in his video, for which he was mocked for scaremongering. And now we see a gang attack a peaceful man on the streets of Montreal, simply for holding a sign expressing the truth the statutory reality, and the statement that changing a child's hormones to stop puberty can be seen as abuse. Oh, Canada, <laughs> our home and native land. <laughs> oh, Canada, indeed. But the insanity is not solely the purview of Canadian leftists. It's a pervasive mindset found in virtually every faction of the left, from Antifa to Black Lives Matter, which originally posted its Marxist desire to destroy the nuclear family, then removed the statement from the official website, all the way over to university professors, to federal and many state and local governments. Expression of opinions and the voluntary adoption of peaceful social adjustments are simply natural outgrowths of free will. But opinions backed by violence and threats of state punishment, such as, well, Joe Biden's January 20th executive order mandating that health insurance providers cover gender transition drugs and surgery, that landlords must rent to transsexuals, and a lot more, they are all unnatural and unethical acts of force. They're no better than the violent thugs who attacked Elston in Montreal. And it's important that we recognize the panoply of this aggression. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'm Gardner Goldsmith. It's great to have you along for the ride. Remember, if you want to, we would love to see your comments on YouTube and head over to Parlor as well. Please subscribe at both sites. You can always find us at mrctv.org. You can always find us over at Twitter, in Facebook, on Parlor, And if you get the opportunity, head over to mrc-store to get some fantastic MRC items for MRC TV. Great to have you along, everybody. I'm Gardner Goldsmith.